Good afternoon. So I'm Veronique Neumeister. I work for Yale Pathology Tissue Services and wanted to introduce this facility to you. It is directed by Dr. David Rim, who is unfortunately unable to come today. So our mission is to provide the maximum amount and quality of human tissue for research at Yale University without impacting diagnostic quality, accuracy, and the safety in pathology. So how can we do that, and what are the resources we offer for this? So actually, we have kind of four subdivisions to the Yale Pathology Tissue Services, which is developmental histology, then tissue procurement and distribution, the clinical trials tissue services office, and the specialized translational services lab. And I wanted to introduce each of these subdivisions to you and give you um, an overview of what they do and what would be important for you for your research. Starting out with developmental histology. So developmental histology consists of two parts. Um, one of these parts works with archival tissue and the other one offers more complex histology services. So starting talking about um, the tissue services first, developmental histology has access to um, the Yale Pathology archives. So we are talking about uh, formalin fixed paraffin embedded tissue because that is how it is stored. And uh, developmental histology can access all these tissue blocks for you. They often uh, work with the researchers with construction of tissue microarrays, as you can see here, the TMAs. So I guess everybody knows what TMAs are, just very briefly and quickly. The advantage of TMAs, uh, working with TMAs, is that you can get really high throughput analysis and cohort analysis, mainly on retrospective cohorts, in a very quick manner. So it's a highly efficient way for um, discovery work, I would say. So they can access the blocks, pull them for you, construct tissue microarrays, or you can also just order whole tissue sections of any archival uh, specimen at Yale. They also design arrays with you and talk everything through. This is the tissue part, and then the other part of developmental histology offers the regular histology services also for animal work. So if you have animal tissue, animal work going on, you can bring them formally in fixed uh, animal tissue and they process it for you with embedding, sectioning, and anything further that needs to be done. They also have a whole list of antibodies. They validate it and offer special stains and immunohistochemistry and all sorts of other things. Again, you can just contact them and they would work with you. Very valuable, I would say, are um, the cohorts, and there are many cohorts already constructed and in stock with complete follow-up information and just ready to go for different um, cancers, different cancers and tissue types. Then Yale Tissue Procurement and Distribution Facility is run by Yalai Bar, and uh, the mission of this facility is to maximize the access of human tissue to translational investigators. And they do this by working with you and developing uh, SOPs with you. So you can contact Yalai and she would um, develop these standard operating procedures depending on your question. So they have people who are working in uh, the operating room and collect tissue after the SOPs are set up and then process them accordingly, depending on your question, what kind of tissue you want, how you want it stored, and what else you would need. They also collect autopsy tissue and then distribute and deliver it to you, depending on what was set up beforehand. The next subdivision is the Yale Clinical Trial Tissue Services. So they work with the Yale Cancer Center in terms of procurement, preparation, submission of the human tissue for all the clinical trials which are initiated at the Yale Cancer Center, and then they distribute the slides or the blocks uh, worldwide. They are, the demands are increasing, they are very busy, so that's going really well. And then the last um, subdivision is the Specialist Translational Services Lab. 
So now you have heard that you have access to all of these tissue, but what can you do with it? So we actually also offer tissue served bases, uh, tissue served, tissue based services in a CLIA certified lab setting. We mainly focus on uh, automated quantification of uh, proteins and non-coding RNAs, and we do this in situ. So we don't grind up the tissue, but we perform in situ analysis. We work mainly with quantitative immunofluorescence using the aqua method of quantification, but we also work with DAB if this is requested. The quantitative immunofluorescence has um, the advantage of better dynamic range of the biomarkers of interest you want to quantify, and it is more reproducible than DAB and a little better standardized probably. But it depends on the question you have. So if you want to look at dynamic ranges of proteins or non-coding RNAs and differential expression levels and quantification might be better because it allows you to really differentiate between uh, variability and expression. So a lot of our time is consumed by antibody validation and standardizing protocols. This is just an overview of how we approach the antibody uh, validation. It's a very busy slide, but and what is on the wire is not always in the wire. So any antibody we receive, we like to test. This is sometimes a little but it's very time consuming and if researchers often come with suggestions and say we tested this antibody before and then it doesn't work in our hands. So we like to work with them and see what is really going on. We evaluate with Western blot, with knockdown RNA in cell lines, uh, with formalin fixed paraffin embedded cell line pellets we make with positive and negative controls of tissue samples. and. We like to construct um, protein or RNA-specific index arrays where we have um, a TMA consisting of 40 up to 100 spots with known positive and negative controls and often cell lines with differential expression levels for every protein of interest. Uh, we run these index arrays alongside our analysis then so we can really define cutoff values and have uh, quality control for our runs and can also normalize them from run to run so all your essays which are run on different days can be compared to each other because there's always some variability in the staining. So this is a big part of what we do as well, um, development of index arrays. Also development of new essays. This is just an example for evaluation, in situ evaluation of mRNA, which is a modified assay working with ACD reagents, where we modified it so we can quantify it with immunofluorescence instead of using DAB. And the other important part of our work is that we look at different variables which could impact your analysis. So we spend quite some time on quality control of the tissue itself, not only the assay, because you can have the perfect assay. If your tissue does not have sufficient quality, it won't work either. So this is just an example that, for example, tissue age can affect protein and mRNA assessment, but there are all other variables which could influence your analysis. For example, right now we are looking at the age of stored slides, uh, how long can a cut section be stored and it is still valid for your analysis. We often get slides which have been stored for two or three years and then you don't really know if your analysis is representative or not. So these are other efforts that are going on. This is the research we are doing ourselves on the site. Um, this is the team working for YPTS. So Dr. David Rim is the director. Oh yeah, here we go. Then this is the developmental histology team, uh, tissue procurement and distribution, clinical tissue services, and this is the specialized translational services lab. We also have uh, a programmer working for us, helping with uh, online ordering systems and barcoding 
processing and different other issues. All of this work is um, based on cost recovery. So it is a fee-for-service work. So you will have to either put it into a grant application and we can give you the costs so you can plan accordingly, or it is often a little difficult to generate uh, preliminary data, so we would work with you on that, but usually you will have, you have to pay a fee for the services. Happy to take questions.